behind us. We should play like Savage or something. Like, all out, balls to the walls. Gonna stop. Absolutely, it was an old school just slugfest, man. And we just were well, fighting each other, and uh, well, we were lucky to get some breaks. Our defense made some plays, and we were able to take advantage of those. Yeah, Shelton is as advertised. I would say it's the best Shelton team I've seen since Dan Orlovsky was the quarterback. Um, I'll make that. I'll make that statement. Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to the Meat Grinder, your weekly dose of high school football in Connecticut. And I am your host, Sean Patrick Boley. With me, as always, is Peter Braga. Peter, what's up? Nothing much, Sean. How are you doing? Just fantastic. Our first guest on the meat grinder. It's been a slow burn here, but it's our first guest in the meat grinder appropriately for a team who's 2-0 and heading to one of its biggest games in recent memory. That'd be Mike Drury. First time on the program. Mike Drury of Southington joining us in a little bit. But uh, it's just, I mean, all in all, it's a really pretty big week. Last week, we thought it was going to be kind of quiet, and it was. You know, some interesting results here and there. And this week, you know, I'm sure Al Carbone is just thrilled. The alliance is flaring up. And, uh, you know, it's a full-blown uh, mess on our hands this week with just the CCC joining in full force, and it's going to be a battle royale. It's massive. It is absolutely massive looking at the Week 3 schedule. There are some, like, interconference games that are, are cool, but you look down this list, and there are so many intriguing games. On top of the ones, you know, obviously you mentioned Southington. They're going down to Greenwich uh, to play the number one Cardinals, like, but there's others on this list that I'm very intrigued to see, intrigued to find out, you know, how these teams are going to do and, you know, what conferences are, um, you know, who's the big conference on the block? Who's the big dog? Exactly. Right? Well, woof, woof. at the top of the show, we already heard somebody casting his lot in with the Shelton Gales. I mean, Eric Becker of hand decides he's going to cast, go all in, <laughs> pulls all his chips in. On uh, on Shelton, with say with his comments that heard around the state, that he thought that this was the best Shelton team since Danny O roamed the sidelines twenty two years ago. Beat uh, when Danny O was roaming the high school field at Shelton High School. I was roaming the hallways of the Harbor Elementary School in Seaford, so I don't really remember that. <laughs> um, there have been some good Shelton teams. I mean, this is my ninth year doing high school football eight season mm. um sean's had some really good teams picarello david wells the 15 team that went to the finals um and lost to darianne which was a really good darianne team in 15 there's been some really good shelton teams two games in is a big um you know that's a that's a big that was bold uh, was bold. bold bold that's the word that was a bold yeah. comment to make he could turn out to be right I mean, this Shelton team has done nothing but thump opponents the first two weeks of the season. Look, I'll be honest with you. We're going to get into it. I switched my vote. I you almost did. did it last week. I did it this week. I didn't pull the trigger on that though this week, uh, mostly because Mike D. Felice was at the beginning, right before he goes, stop voting for us, please. You know, they beat Ridgefield up 55 to 14. Everyone that opened, that was an eye opener last week. And, you know, Shelton was in a dogfight with Hand there at the Finn Stadium. It, it was, you know... It, if they're the best team since Orlovsky, now Orlovsky's team, if you recall, well, you probably don't. I was no. there for that. Fifth that was my grade. first year covering high school sports uh, in Connecticut. But uh, if you recall that year, there was there was some dog fights. Now I don't think the game is the same game it was twenty years ago. We had Derek Derek Lewis was you know running around out there <laughs> running over guys for West Haven. That was some big games, man. That back then. But, you know, um, you know I, if this is the best team, you know, Shelton, I mean, excuse me, Hand must be right there. Because even without some guys, they were right in this game. Their defense was awesome. Taking a quick look at it, they stopped Shelton on down to start the game inside their own five-yard line. And it was zip, zip, zip right back down the field. Uh, Hand looks pretty good. 
but you know, Shelton's got that kid, David. And I'm gonna try here. <laughs> I just gotta pronounce his name. It's Joel Jahad. Joel David Jolita. Joel. I can't do it. Joe Jodelico. Jodelico. There you go. Right. Jodelico. That sound kind of right. That looked right. I have no idea. <laughs> David Jodelico had a pickoff and two pickoffs, and uh, he scored two touchdowns. And the Shelton defense was every bit the part uh, his hand was. And eventually, finally, Shelton's uh, offense took control. Michael Kinnick was brilliant, twenty of twenty-three for two hundred sixty-seven yards, and and threw a touchdown pass to Kanye Tinney. And Shelton finally started putting hand away it was a pretty close battle but every time hand got into shelton territory they got stopped whether it was joe jellico picking off a couple passes or if it was a strip by joey gelati or something they would stop him on downs hand played well up until they got into shelton territory and then the, the gales turned on the defense and became the first team to shut out hand since west haven in 2014. but again like you just said two games in uh, I mean, they, they think they're going to be pretty good, but... Well, I mean, Eric played against Shelton. I know him and Mike DeFelice actually played twice against each other in high school. They split. I think uh, Eric Becker's team won his junior year, and then the next year, their senior year, Mike DeFelice is Shelton team won. Um, so he's been around. He he knows, obviously, a lot. He's seen, he's seen a lot. He's seen them all. He Give is, him that much. He is Mr. Hand Historian, so... You know, when he says something like that, you definitely pay attention. Well, I was starting to go, are you sure about that? Because I've seen them all, too. I saw Arlovsky's team. I saw uh, the 20, 2003 team that won a state champ. They won a state championship. I was there for Schultz, uh, Jeff Schultz, who the only loss they had before losing the Grange in the final was to Hand, 33-7, in a just, a just a downpour at Finn Stadium. And that was a, hand, it was a Guilford baseball coach. Nick Marullo's debut at quarterback, if you recall. And uh, Eric Becker was on the staff that day. And, uh, you know, so we saw that team. You know, that we you talk about the other guys. Mark Piccarello, who was there, by the way. Nice to see Mark hanging out. You know, got the long hair going. Hasn't gone skiing yet. He didn't go skiing last year. He was a little mad about that. But, but uh, and then the year after, you know, you had, uh, you know, you had those guys in 2015 who, uh, you know, first play of the game, their quarterback goes down. That was that. But, uh no, time will tell. We're certainly going to find out a lot about Shelton, not just about Shelton, but a lot about the other teams, especially Greenwich. Now, we're on the sidelines at hand, and I kept checking that Greenwich Ridgefield score. Pete, what was going on up there? I don't know. I, I, I Our coworker, Dave Stewart, was there, and he joked with me. We were talking about, uh, you know, lengths of our stories, right? You know, game stories online, and... He was like, yo, yeah, it should be like 300 words. But I don't think he meant 350 words just for a box score. Yeah. <laughs> 13 touchdowns. Was it 90-something points? I mean, just an absurd game. Look, I mean, that game caused me to flip my vote um, from from Greenwich to Shelton uh, just because of how, hand, you know, how much Shelton just handled Richfield. But good for Greenwich to rally in a game like this. And I think it shows a lot of character. I think it shows a lot of, um, you know, you need to win games like that to win championships. It's not, we're going to have teams who are going to blow through, go 12-0, and 13-0, and, and win every game by 20 points. It's going to happen. But the playing games like that can, you know, pay off at the end of the year when you're in a dogfight in the playoffs. And it's like, hey, we've been there. We were down 21 uh, nothing. I think it says a lot about Greenwich. A lot, a lot, a lot. Because if they would have lost that game, no, you don't know what's going to happen. They're going. They're playing Southington this week. They come off a, a loss like that to Ridgefield going oh, yeah. into Southington. They they might come in heads he, heads low, and then all of a sudden Southington jumps out on top early, and then all of a sudden they're staring at one and two in the face. So, yeah. uh, you know, coming back and winning this game is huge for the Cardinals. I think it's beyond huge. I think it's massive. They they think that if they're going to go on and win the state championship here, uh, certainly. Uh, that winning that game was a big step in the right direction because, like I said, something been coming into town. Now you got doubts. Um, shout out to your guy though, Keller, who must have stuck in Ridgefield crawl. That everyone was like, "What's wrong with you guys?" Getting beat up by Shelton like that. They came out on fire. He accounted for four, I think, four or five touchdowns. Keller, he was just on fire. Twenty-one nothing right out of the gate, and uh, you know they tacked on one more. That might have been it. But I give Greenwich credit for this. 
They stuck to the plan. They just pounded away on the ground. They had uh, Jack Conisberg. They had Jack Wilson, the quarterback. And they had George Vumalakis. Vum, I can't even pronounce this. Everyone's got names I can't pronounce. But Vumalakis, I believe it is. Uh, he's another key guy. We'll get his name right sooner or later. But he's another key guy. They were just ground and pound. Ground, they just kept pounding away. And uh, Ridgefield just, you know, I think the, the worst thing Ridgefield could have done was go up big early because that's plenty of time for Greenwich to come back. But, you know, I still give them a ton of credit. 0-2 to start the season, but that's not a bad 0-2, considering, especially if uh, Eric Becker is correct and that this is the greatest Shelton team since Danny O. Yeah, but- I mean, it's uh, in 2019, Notre Dame had to open up against hand and then um, St. Joe's and back-to-back weekends. And we knew at that beginning of the year, the top two teams in the state were hand and St. Joe's and they met in the L final and the winner of that team was the number one team in the state that year. And Notre Dame had to open with them. Right. But because of those two losses, Notre Dame kind of didn't really have a chance to recover to make the playoffs that year. And they finished six and four. They were the 11 seed in L. Now you look at it this year with the way that the divisions are different. They're kind of wide open. Richfield is still in play here. Oh, yeah. Coming off of these two games. So it's not the end of the world for They're in Ridgefield. double L. They're double L. They're sitting at 0-2 with 37 points. They're 16th right now. They got Hall next, then Stanford, then West Hill, then St. Joe's, Wilton, Trumbull, Staples, Danbury. You could and- potentially see Ridgefield. They play their cards right. Three and two heading into that St. Joseph game. And I do not put anything past them at that point. Exactly. I think we're, we're, this Richfield team could still go seven and three and make the postseason, maybe six and four if the points fall their way. Not saying Kevin Callahan wants to lose four games, but I still think everything is in play. It's not a bad 0 and 2 place to be. Uh, obviously, they wish they were one and one after their start against Greenwich, but it's not the end of the world for them. Yeah. Ridgefield definitely needs to get on the win calm there, though, because it's been a while. It's been at least October last year since they last had a victory. So uh, in order to do that, they need to get in the win column. Hopefully they can get it done this week. You know, uh, let's just quickly, since we're all talking about votes and top, let's go to the top 10 and get this uh, sorted out. There were some thoughts that Greenwich might be it, might lose a lot of votes. Uh, But then again, I remember that this is the uh, media poll and they never really take a giant leap unless somebody loses. Uh, There were some defections, but Greenwich, number one, 15 first place votes. They had 22 last week after their 49-42 victory over Ridgefield. Uh, so the cards go into this home opener. They're finally home, two games to start on the road, and they got to face Ridgefield. I'm sorry, they got to face Southington and uh, in a pretty big matchup. But number two is New Canaan. They beat up on McMahon. Number three, Shelton. Maybe she should be a little higher if they're uh, going to be Danny O's team. I think Danny O's team started the season number one. Now I think about it. I'm not quite positive, but they were, they were close. But uh, Shelton comes in at number three. Number four, Killingly, which just wiped out Norwich Free Academy and just the Soren Reef and, and Jacks and the offensive line just humming. That game, it was they, it was an obliteration. 56-6. to six. Killingly, you know, we, we thought they were the class of the uh, ECC, but somebody out there was telling us this might be the best – ECC team they've seen in 20 years. I mean, we're we're, we're getting putting a lot of pressure. Everyone on everyone's guys. getting really bold. Everyone's getting really <laughs> bold, guys. It's September 19th. All right? Like let's not get crazy here. We see things change. Look, last year around this time, Maloney was one and one and we were like, "Oh, are they going to be good enough? They lost to Southington. They got better as the year went on and they finished I think as the number 2 team in the state." I have no let's, idea. Let's not get crazy here. Yeah, I have no idea who said that. It was brought up on our conference call. Jeff Jacobs, who monitors that side of the state for us, the ECC side. Um, but, I, yeah, I mean, look, they're good. Don't, don't get me wrong. But, you know, I mean, there have been some pretty good teams over there in the ECC. Fitch, London. I mean, you know. Anyway, number five, speaking of good teams, there's Maloney. Uh, they got a pretty big game coming up this week. They, uh, they got Darian in a battle. That's, you know, one of those things where the, the beginning of the season, you're like, wow, Double L versus L champions, and then Darian loses, and it, it doesn't. It's not as sexy as it was maybe two weeks ago or a month ago. But uh, Maloney, they go, uh, they play Darian this week in a pretty big game. Moving on, we got six Southern. We talked a little bit about them. We'll talk to uh, uh, Mike Drury in a little bit. 
Number seven, St. Joseph, which, hey, 2-0. and oh, Joe Del Vecchio has signed up for that in second. Uh, they wiped out. It was a lot closer than this final score, but the ending, they just kind of pulled away, and it was just all St. Joseph all the time. 42-21 to 21 over. A, I thought it was a pretty good Staples team. Defense showed up for St. Joe. Their quarterback, Will Sinjual, was on fire. He threw for a touchdown. He ran for another and uh, early on to get that game going. And uh, he looked a lot better, a lot better than he did against Darien last week, even though he threw two touchdown passes late. So he's really starting to feel the defense, I thought, Pete. Maybe, maybe a little bit underrated here. St. Joseph looked great, I thought, especially as they got going against Staples. Yeah, I uh, on one of our shows, I, I someone messaged us, and I, I believe I said, if St. Joe's defense plays like it did against Staples, like it did against Darien, Staples is going to score a lot of points. And the person sent me that message and was like, bah, 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 like you, you know, you were wrong. And I was like, yeah, sure, you know, Staples won. I, I St. Joe's won. I did pick Staples, but St. Joe's defense did play a lot better this week. I wasn't incorrect. Their defense. They got to the quarterback. They had six sacks. Your boy Kill Martin had three against Staples he looked great. on Saturday. He looked awesome. They only got to the quarterback twice against Darian. They got to the quarterback six times on Saturday against Staples. Their defense did play better. And I was right. <laughs> <laughs> so St. Joseph, uh, they get massive at home. Who made St. Joseph's schedule? Oh my goodness. Darian at home. Then they play Staples at home. And now they get Massick in a game that that uh, they have actually played. I thought they'd never played, but they actually had played Massick back in the you know 80s. It was like they played on Thanksgiving for a few years during the old WCC years before St. Joseph was in the FCAC. So there have been a few times. I don't think Massick's ever beat St. Joseph. But uh, now they renew the rival here. And a Massick team, you saw them against... Notre Dame Fairfield, Pete, last week, um, you know, and I thought that would be a pretty interesting game because Notre Dame Fairfield's on the up and up. Massick coming all lost to Trumbull, and uh, uh, Massick was just kind of, uh, let's just say they popped the champagne. Yeah, Massick was playing with a chip on their shoulder after their week one loss. Talk about popping champagne. They popped Notre Dame 38 nothing. Dylan Jackson looked good. Jason Champagne looked good. Gavin and Shane Walker, the sophomore twins that we talked about, look really good. But I will say this. They're one and one right now. Steve Christie at the end of the game. He told me, it was in my story if you haven't read it, but he goes, they, you know, the fans were on the field. Like it was, it was a pretty crazy environment, uh, which is what they want at Massive Games. Like a lot of fans. It was loud. Uh, it was neon night or whatever. Everyone's wearing safety vests. Um, it was crazy. And everyone was celebrating. And, and Steve Christie looks around and goes, this celebration will be over in about an hour. And then it's on to the biggest games of our lives. And we're good with that. We are ready for that. We need to get that one. And then we're back in the playoff picture. All right. To recap, it's the best Shelton. We too. It's the best Shelton team since Danny Olavsky. It was the best ECC team in 20 years. Forget Jordan Reed and New London and all those guys. Forget it. Casey Cochran. Yeah. yeah forget it. Um, and now finally, Massick playing the biggest game of their entire life. Maybe their lives. But I mean, maybe not Mass. I would hopefully he would not think Massick uh, itself. But no, uh, I think he was saying our like the guys on the team. But <laughs> I got to shout out hyperbole. Shout out hyperbole here for everybody. Just let's let's keep it real. Let's calm down. I know we're excited to be playing football again. Everything can't be the greatest thing or biggest game or greatest moment ever. Let's calm down. But I appreciate the sentiment. It is a big game for uh, Mass. Um, but, you know, they're in double M. So, you know, they lose that game. They got a few SWC games they can win. Yeah. But no, Massick looked good. Um, this is definitely a team we heard after the loss to Trumbull was like, Massick's really good. Like, really, really, really good. And um, I got to see it. They are good. Uh, I'm really excited for Saturday's game. Another Saturday afternoon game at uh, at Dowling. Dowling, right? Dowling Field yeah, at Dowling St. Joe's. Field. So another Saturday afternoon that I'll probably be there, I think. So. Yeah. Uh, let's just finish up the top 10. Number eight, Trumbull. Number nine, favorite prep. And number 10, Aunt Sonia. Going backward now. And Sonia wipes up. Wipes the floor with Woodland. I don't think anyone's shocked by that. Fairfield Prep beat Xavier up. So Xavier's 0-2. Fairfield Prep, 
They start. We still don't know a lot about the Jesuits right now. They 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 lost to Balin Prep in the first game of Florida, fifteen to fourteen. All right, we don't know what that team's all about. And then they come back and beat a Xavier team, not as handily as New Canaan did the week before, but still a, thorough, a pretty thorough win for the Jesuits. And then finally, eight Trumbull at West Hill. It looked a lot like last year. It's just the, the kid's name is different this time. What is, what is going on with our guy Johnston? Another four. He had four tu- four rushing touchdowns. He's got ten on the season already. It's week two. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Corbin, who? He's got ten rushing touchdowns. My He's goodness. got, I believe, eleven overall. Uh, he had yeah. obviously seven total in the first week. He had four total on Saturday, but ten of them are rushing. Unbelievable. So uh, that just wraps crazy. up the <laughs> wraps up the top ten beat. Um, I mean, not much change. You had one flip flop. Everyone gave a lot of credit to St. Joseph. Prep kind of dropped down, maybe a little week late, but prep kind of dropped down. Uh, but overall, you know, not too much of an affection from Greenwich uh, other than you and a few other guys. But there you go, the top 10. I suspect this week it's going to be, there's going to be, uh, I don't want to say chaos, but it'll there be could chaos. be. There could be chaos. It's the way some of these go could flip this entire poll on his head next week. I mean, because I'm looking at it like, you know, St. Joe's jump Trumbull. Uh, at seven and eight, well, St. Joe's is playing Massick. So what happens in that game, right? If Massick beats St. Joe's, then Trumbull should theoretically jump St. Joe's, right? You know, so there's going to be a lot of effect, right? Uh, Prep and New Canaan both played Xavier, and now they're playing each other this week, right? Prep and New Canaan, right? We're going to see Southington Greenwich. Killingly's got Bloomfield. I mean, there are so many interesting games where this poll could look completely different a week from today. Before we get to Mike Drury, Pete, let's go to the Alliance scoreboard, the interdivision scoreboard. I'm not counting the games that was like the West Haven versus Notre Dame or the St. Joseph versus Darien. Like we 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 care about the uh, the the leagues here. So let's take a look at the how we've fared in the Alliance to start the season. Now remember, the CCC did not really get involved in the first week. Now this is the lion's share of their games they're going to be playing this week. So uh, right now you have the the FCAC leading the way at nine and three, a pretty, pretty big nine and three. They're led by Greenwich's big win over Newtown. SWC coming in second place at six and six. The SCC under 500, nine and 10. The CCC two and three, though that will definitely change. The ECC four and seven. And the CTC getting its one win. He had a Bullard Havens beating Bridgeport Central out of the FCAC, but they are one and two in their first foray into the, uh, into the alliance here, Pete. Yeah, I mean, I think this is kind of what we, right? I mean, the FCAC is the top dog uh, until dethroned. And, you know, I don't want to look too far ahead, but well, we, there's gonna be a week lot three. Of- we yeah. three could be a little fun. Well, we'll be doing a lot of that stuff on the on the, the, uh, on the Pick'em's podcast. And Pete, but what some of the games that we're looking at here, Pete, I mean, what 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 else? Uh, in terms of like what games stand out, how much time you got? Uh, <laughs> not, not much, but I mean, just going off the bat of Alliance games. I mean, I'm intrigued. Enfield's driving 90 miles to get to McMahon on, on Friday night at six o'clock. Uh, you know, uh, that's a long bus ride, even if you know, for you know, Enfield hasn't won a game since 2019. Um, but you know, that's a long, long, long drive on a bus. Uh, for a football game. So I'm really interested to see how Enfield, you know, fares coming off that buzz. Uh, you know, a couple of ones that stick out. Berlin. Berlin's 2-0. They're playing Fitch. It's 2-0. Uh, shout out to Coach Joe Arasimowitz. He is a friend of the program, uh, as he refers to himself an FOP, which I absolutely love that. Uh, so that's, again, Bloomfield Killingly. Oh, my I mean, God. These are two teams that have been mainstays in the M and the S championship the last, you know, four or five years. We got them playing in the regular season. Bloomfield's going to Killingly. Um, last year's Class M champion versus last year's Class S runner-up. Uh, not quite the Darien uh, Maloney, but, you know, I, that's a massive match. They're massive. not the same division, though. but Yeah, but just a massive game where it kind of helps us kind of view where these teams kind of stand. Uh, you know, Staples, Newington, Newington 0-2. Uh, you know, lost a crazy game on Thursday night. Oh my god, um, we didn't even talk about that game. Yeah, I mean, they're they're 0 2, but they're going up against the Staples team coming off a loss. You got Barlow and Weathersfield 
are both 2-0 and playing this week. Obviously, then the really good ones, right? Fairfield Prep, New Canaan, Maloney, Darianne, Newtown Hand, Shelton, Windsor. Those are crazy games, and that's just Friday. Yeah. Saturday, we got Massac at St. Joe's, and we got Southington at Darien. I mean, this is just, this is crazy. Quick shout out to uh, to Declan McCann of Connard, who just willed his team back. I mean, the whole team played great. They got down, um, but just willed his team back. With uh, Newington, when, as we thought, they are good, Newington. They were uh, up big on them. I believe they were up 20 points. And uh, Declan McCann, man, uh, and and Connor, just they just kept chipping away. Just like Granite's just chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. Newington faced about fourth and three at the Connor 30. They go for it. Didn't get it. With about seven minutes left, they didn't get the ball back. Like this McCann kid converts two, he converts a fourth and nine or fourth and ten to keep the drive going. They converts another fourth down and then punches it in to uh, win that game with like a minute, with under a minute, with 40 seconds left. And Connor with a big win coming out of the, you know, their opening loss to Staples. Not not bad at all. Now Newington also an 0-2. Now they got to defeat Staples, a team that Connor lost to. So, and, Connor, uh, and Connor's got Cheshire. That's another good matchup. Oh, my goodness. Cheshire's 2-0. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I wish I could split myself into like 20 guys because we're, I wish I could for a lot of other reasons. We need CIC red zone, Pete. Oh my God. Get Scott Hansen to do it. (laughs) Now we're going to go live up to West Hartford Connard and there's Don trust on the sideline. (laughs) That would be sick. (laughs) We got to get our guys at the day to do that. I think they can, they have the capabilities. With all that said, there's so much going on. Like, tune in next week because we have a, have a lot to cover. I don't even know if we're going to have a guest. But speaking of guests, let's bring our our first of the season, Southerton's Mike Jury. <laughs> Joining us on the show is, of course, the head football coach of the Southington Knights, the Southern Blue Knights. It's Mike Jury. We've never had him on here before. Welcome, coach. Off to a great start. But, uh, yeah, we're glad to have you on. Guys, appreciate it. Love, you know, always listen, you know, long time listener. All right, first time, uh, uh, not caller, but first time on here, and I appreciate yeah. it very much. Yeah, well, we, we welcome you, and, uh, you know, it was the first thing we thought of when we saw that you'd won your 100th victory, which is, uh, that's, uh, you know, even in 10, that's pretty good within, you know, 10, what is it, 11 years now, head coach? You've been there since 2011, which, my yeah. goodness, the time flies. I, I remember you were like, you were, what, you were 20-something years old, 28 years old when you got the job. You know, yeah. thrown in there into the fire, and now you got a hundred wins. What's what's that like? Um, you know, it's 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 a great accomplishment. I mean, but it's it's really goes all back on the kids and the coaches and and everybody else. I mean, it's it's a it's a team effort. As every you know, coach knows. You know, you, you don't win these games yourself. You never. You know, if you think you are, you're wrong. It's it's everyone kind of pulling together. So, but you know, it's a great accomplishment, and you know, I'm excited, and um, you know, hopefully, get another hundred more here. Tell us a little bit about your guys this year, you know, off to a two and all start. I mean, listen, there isn't a season that goes by, especially since you've been there, but Southern is always in the mix. You know, Southern has got a proud football program. We all know, you know that, um, you know, but uh, just tell me about this year's group, you know, after coming off last year, you know, solid year playoffs. Um, you know, what, 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 what was the goal this year? Um, you know, now you got, you, you got a team that uh, you didn't, you didn't have to worry about a pandemic coming out of, you have a full season of practice, a full year, under your belt, and you know what, what? What was the expectation going in, and then how do you think you've done so far? I mean, you know, the expectation. You know, we lost some great players from last year, but you know, again, here, you know, the mentality is, and, and the the mantra has always been next man up. Like, you know, we, we, who's the who's the next team we're going to be reloaded with? Um, you know, not reloaded with. So, you know, the seniors who are coming up. You know, a lot of those guys who are playing varsity level roles this year you know, were JV players, two year JV players, and that's kind of how it works in this team. You know, and these guys kind of wait their time and when their turn comes. Um, they come out and, 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 and they show out. So, I mean, you know, we had some great returners come from last year. Lincoln Cardillo, um, obviously, is off to a great start this year, running back for us. Um, he played, he kind of split time at running back a little bit last year, played defense as well. Um, but, you know, we knew the type of player he was going to be. He's he's dynamic with the ball in his hands and, you know, physical and tough and, and a great leader of the team. So, um, you know, it, it's great. And, you know, a couple of returns, Cam Bodwin, who's a receiver for us, uh, defense side of the ball as well. Another guy who's a returner who, who we know is, you know, we were going to have to lean on some of these guys who had that varsity level experience last year. 
to kind of to kind of get everyone moving in the same direction. So, um, you know, we're just you know we're proud how they prepared. I mean, the off season was the, a normal off season this year, first one in two years, which felt really good. Um, you know, in terms of like just everyone being in the weight room, um, all our seven on sevens are, you know, we did winter, spring, summer, seven on sevens camps, all that good stuff that that really prepares you to, to be the best you can be, um, you know, for the season. So I thought, you know, we, our guys did a great job preparing and, um, you know, they're excited, um, you know, to, to have, have a great year and, and maximize, you know, our ability here this year. Pete, you saw their first game, you know, uh, we have any, uh, any any impressions here? I mean, we, we, well, I mean, we do. What did you say about uh, Cardell? I mean, he's been he was- I mean, he's he's awesome. But the weird thing is, and Coach touched on it. Obviously, he split time last year, plays offense and defense. He's kicking extra points too. And you just coach you you just didn't mention that he was just knocking in. You know, he's putting up. You know, he scores a touchdown. He's getting all seven points. He's getting those extra points for you. Have you ever had a guy like that where you know he's like your top receiver, top running back, and he's kicking he's kicking extra points for you? No, I mean, you know, historically here, we've had a lot of guys who are, who are just only kickers, but just, you know, we don't have them right now. And, you know, we're always recruiting hard for that stuff, but, um, you know, we don't have that. And Lincoln has a foot. He, we knew, you know, he was our backup kicker last year to Barnum, who was obviously a great kicker, yep. um, who was kicking off this weekend for Albany. So, you know, guys like that, we didn't have them. So, you know, Lincoln stepped up. Um, I've never had it. I played with one in high school, Tim Washington. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. He was, he was also the kicker as well as the punter. And, you know, so he kind of did it also. Lincoln's got a little bit of that in him here. That's right. You well, were we at Central, guy, right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Well, we had a guy on first team all state last year who did that, Corbin Smith. But he's playing oh, rugby yeah. over in uh, England now. So, <laughs> you know what? You know, no <laughs> pressure, Lincoln. No pressure, Lincoln. <laughs> Sometimes your best guys and the guys who are skillful, they got to do different things for you, you know, especially the high school level where you can't recruit that kicker. You don't have that guy, you know, so the guy's got to step up. What do you guys do? You said but, you, know, you, you you did say something about recruiting though. You said, "What do you guys do? Put like stuff up on the walls of the school and be like, all right, everybody knows how to kick. Anybody, you know, apply within." Absolutely, you know, we're we're always doing that stuff. We're getting the guys. Hey, let's get this guy. Let's try him out. You know, do that stuff. I mean, that's what you do. You know, build a program. You know, you never know. Diamonds are the rough, guys. We've had guys come out who really I didn't know anything about them. All of a sudden, they're players for us. You know, or they're able to do certain things. They're able to find a role, a niche within the program, and. The more you can do that, the more you can get more kids out and, and feel part of uh, what we're doing here. Come out, big win against Newington. Another big win week two. You guys are going into Greenwich, a game that a lot of people have kind of circled, right? This is what the alliance was supposed to do. And, you know, what is, you know, the team's mindset? Have, have you guys been looking ahead at Greenwich? Obviously, it hasn't reflected your record because you're 2-0, and but how long has that game been circled on the calendar? Well, you know, we, we know what they, what they have down there, you know, you know, I'm friends with some of the coaches on their coaching staff. So we've, we've had, we've talked, we talk a lot and um, you know, we knew that this was going to be a big game. Um, you know, they're a great team. All right. They were number one in the, in the polls right now, deservingly so. Um, you know, we know that you know, a couple of years ago, years ago, 2019 went down to, to Darien and these are the games we want to play. I mean, you know, we're, we're not looking to shy away from anything. Uh, we want to go play these games. We want to be a part of that. Um, you know, I'm a big, huge proponent of the, of the Alliance. Um, you know, whether you win, lose, all right, obviously the goal is always to be able to win, but, you know, you're going to get better as a program and, and as players get, you know, playing in games with that type of experience. So, you know, we're excited. I mean, the kids are fired up. Um, I know those kids will be fired up, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a great environment to go play in. Mike, you've got yeah, a- two, you've got two state championships, you know, so you've got something no slots and you've certainly upheld that the last few times in Fairfield County, it's been kind of ugly. Granted, you beat Fairfield prep to win a title. All right. So you got one Fairfield team. That's an SEC team though, but the FCX stuff, man. Yeah. What do you, what do you owe, owe in six in, in your career, at least there? I mean, Darian was on a run. You kind of ran smack to them, but then last yeah. year, you know, I, you know, you guys, so this, it must be kind of be a little bit of a wounding of the pride there. You got some, some corrections to make down there if uh, if you guys can. Hey, hey, listen, absolutely. You know, you know, we know what they do down there, and, and, and you know, we try to like, you know, match what they do uh, the best we possibly can. Um, you now we got Ridgefield in 2019 in the quarter, so we did have that, and then you know, so right. But up until oh, then, that's you know, right. We, Ridgefield. Yeah, we lost. Yeah, we lost to Darien. Like, I don't know. I think it was about four times. So that was a oh, that was difficult. You know, and they had some great teams and. You know, we just, um, you know, we had some really good opportunities in 2019, which couldn't get it done. Um, so, yeah, obviously, 
listen, we look at every opponent individually um, and, and how we got to prepare and how we got to, you know, get our guys ready for. Um, I think, you know, the big thing is, is, you know, playing teams like that who are coached at a high level, who are always playing at a high level, you know, we got to be able to do that. You know, we got to make sure that we minimize mistakes, that we, you know, we play clean, you know, um, that we, that we highlight our guys and, you know, get the, get the ball to our athletes. And, you know, those are, those are the things that, that we have to do as a program against, against those teams. But then, you know, you got to execute, then you got to stop them. So, um, yeah, they, they, you know, they're always great teams down there and, um, you know, we want to, you know, be right in the conversation with them. You, know, we forget- is it, you think it's a uh, CCC kind of uh, not like thing against the CCC, but everyone's always kind of like, oh, the conference is too big. They can't compete down here. Obviously, Maloney won the double, uh, the L championship over Windsor in L school that did beat an FCX team in the semifinal. But there's a lot of interesting matchups uh, for the CCC this week. You know, what do you say about the conference? And maybe if a couple of games go the CCC's way, you think you could, you know, kind of shut up a lot of those doubters? Hey, you know, we're always, we're always pushing for our guys up here, um, obviously to, to get it done against any other conference. I mean, that's, that's the goal. You know, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of pride with our guys in our conference. Um, so yeah, I mean, team, people can say what they want. I mean, you know, there's, there's been years where the CCC was great, you know, and the, you know, the FCX on a great run right now, you know, but um you know, when I was in high school, CCC was a dominant, you know, was a yeah. dominant, you know, uh, conference to be in. And uh, so, you know, you get your kind of ebb and flow, but, um, you know, I think it's just, to me, it's just about putting in the work every day and getting better and trying to better your program every single day. So when you're faced with these opportunities, um, you're able to compete at the highest level you possibly can. Is it just, uh, is it just that if they're on a great run or are they, has the FCX schools done something different that the rest of the state has got to catch up with? Um, hey, always things we're looking to figure out. We're trying to trying to find that information, figure out what's going on and what teams are doing. You, you know, I mean, any coach who who wants to you know keep pushing their program in, in a good direction, you know, you're looking at what other teams are doing. What you know, what are other you know really good teams doing? You know, and and how are they? You know, whether it's their off season, whether it's their strength program, whether it's you know whatever it may be. And you want to try to kind of match that. Um, so I think it's just, you know, finding what that recipe is. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I mean, long season to go. We'll see what happens here. You know, Coach, we uh, we spoke, obviously, about your 100 wins at the beginning of this. You've been the coach now for 11 years. Uh, you grew up. Your dad was a longtime coach. You know, what have you learned over that time period that maybe you wish you could have told your younger self when you took over the program? Like, oh, it would have been good to know that 11 years ago. <laughs> Oh, you know, I mean, there's no, there's no thing about, you know, you're a young coach, you know, you can know scheme, you know, things like that, just situational football. You know, the more you grow as a coach and the more you're in it and you see different things, you know, you, you, you see these different situations that come up and, and preparing your team for different situational football. You know, I think that's something that's, that I've definitely grown over, um, over the years as a coach. And, um, you know, you, you have that, you played in it, you know, and you've seen it, but like, it's just, there's nothing like kind of like being in it in a real game situation where, Hey, we got to prepare for that. Cause guess what? It happened. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, to me, it's like understanding situational football. You know, it was funny that um, I, I completely now remembering that your dad stepped down a pop rock, right? The day you like, basically was going to follow you. If I remember correctly, right. He left to join your staff. You're for, Cause you were young, you know, and he was yeah. like at the end of his great run, he had just taken a team to the finals. It was like 2010 yeah. ish that year where you're going to, yeah. you became the next coach. Like how did that all work out? Tell, tell me a little bit about when you took the job and how, like maybe, you know, you brought your dad Chuck with you. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I was going for the job, um, you know, these are conversations I had, they knew I was young. Okay. So it's a big program. Um, but you know, I was there the year before defense coordinator. So they kind of, you know, I, they knew, you know, who I was. I mean, I had, right. So you, you know, were there coach I was, but, uh, I was there with DJ Hernandez. Okay. So uh, he pulled me over there. Otherwise I probably maybe never would have been, went there. And um, so, uh, you know, I had the conversation with my dad. I go, listen, I need you to come with me. Okay. You know, they, you know, they, they, I think they'll feel, they're going to feel better by having someone, a veteran like you and things like that. And, you know, it's, it's a tough decision. And, you know, I know pushed him out what he was doing, but he was retired as, as a retired teacher already. So he was, he did one year of just coaching, no teaching. Um, and then he sat down, my mom, they talked and, you know, he quickly said yes. And, you know, so, and that was, that was helpful. Like having someone, you know, who, who's been through it, who, who knows, you know, you know, just how to handle certain situations, you know, just having that kind of soundboard, uh, early on in my career was great. And still today, obviously, but, 
Um, so that, you know, he, he, he jumped right on. I mean, and if it was my kid and I got two young boys and if they're in that situation, do the same thing. That must've been really special though. Coach with him, you know, I mean, is he, I haven't seen you guys. Is he still kind of helping out? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He coaches the running backs. Oh He's good. All right. Yeah. All right. Great room. He always has like the best, you know, it's like, Oh God, here's our best players are running back. And you know, Chuck gets them every year, but he's uh, tremendous work in the mind with the kids. And um, you know, the kids love him. I mean, he he's here at every, I mean, he's 76, just turned 76. He's at every off season event, unless my mom's pulling away from to go on vacation or something. Um, but he's at everything and he's the first one there when the last ones to leave. And it's just, it's the way he's kind of brought up. And that's his DNA. Was there any talk Mike about going to the double win when he came over? Was it strictly going to stay air raid at Southington? Oh, believe me, there was, there was, there was plenty of talk on that several different occasions, but um, and they, they were actually double wing a, a little bit there. Southington, they ran okay. it in like the mid two thousands to like, you know, early, you know, like 2009, they ran it as a short yardage package, but you know, we never got to it. Um, I don't know why <laughs> we didn't. <It> was <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes for shorter games, but, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, what was it? So what do you, I don't know if we've talked to you about this much, but um, you know, it's a whole kind of a different ball game. You have Alliance games, a little bit different. You have Alliance games. You're, you're, the CCC is kind of moving to a tier system now where you're playing. Something is down there with all the top teams, of course. But you have, you know, Maloney's in there. Now you got Newington in there. Uh, and now that the, the, the state's kind of in six divisions now, now you got a kind of a wide open double L. Just what do you think about the whole setup right now uh, with the state and, and you, even your league? Do you like, do you like the tier system they do there? Um, yeah, I think there's some good things with the tier system. You know, I think, I think it's harder, you know, to me, you know, sometimes I, I hate seeing double L's go down. I really do. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, it's like your double L, you should be playing double L's in, in my opinion, but you know, they kind of they adopted that system similar to like, I think the similar formula to the Alliance system. Um, but, you know, I think it gives teams an opportunity and look what did from Maloney last year and they were able to play a tough schedule and prepare them for, for the playoffs, you know, and they had a great run. Um, you know, it, you know, could it hurt some teams, you know, you might have a great year, great couple of years and all of a sudden you go up and, you know, you're, you're, you're battling some bigger, some bigger schools in that, in that tier one. So, you know, it's not going to be a perfect system. Um, the six divisions, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I like, you know, teams that are eight and two, not missing the play. I missed the playoffs in 2000. We missed the playoffs in 2017. We were a really good football team. You know, we had two losses with some horrific injuries that year, but we got healthy at the end of the year and we missed it by like 10 points. So I like, we have teams like that who are able to get in. Um, you know, I don't know what the right answer is. If it's, a create a separate tech league or, you know, we've, you've had those conversations and I've listened to them all. And I, you know, I like those ideas, but I mean, it is what it is right now. And we, we got to face whoever we're going to face. Do your kids like it? Do our kids like it? Yeah. I mean, we don't really talk about it. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. It's not like a big conversation, you know, what's going on. I mean, you know, if you look at last year, the double L, the double L was loaded. Right. And now a lot of those teams have gone down to the L now. I don't know. Is it as strong? You know, it depends. Year, year to year, some teams might, you know, historically those teams for the past five or six years that went down, tremendous. Like, are they as strong as they have been? Time will tell. I'm not sure. So it's hard. Like, you're always going to get one, one grouping that's going to be kind of, it's usually the L or double L that's kind of like got a lot and it's going to be really hard and really competitive. The interesting thing about it is you guys won in the, the old setup. You 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 won in the 13 season yeah. where you just roll, I mean, like you said, it's not, we forgot Ridgefield. I apologize. You did beat them. And that was a pretty, and they just knocked New, uh, Newtown off that year. But, and then yeah. you beat Fairfield Prep. Uh, so you won it that way. Then the next year you won it in the, the truncated, you know, the eight division yeah. set up, which was, you know, it was really interesting. Uh, I mean, I mean, did you, you kind of sell it at both ends. And the funny thing about it is we bring this up all the time. In 10 years, nobody remembers that you, you won, you had to win two games or you had to win one game or whatever. They just don't remember it. So I don't know. But what was better? Did, did you like one better or the other? I mean, I don't know. Do you more proud of 13 than you are 14 or, or what? Well, 14, I think there was something left on the table of some of those teams that we wanted to get a shot at. Um, you know, it was a really good team that year, that 2014 team. They were, you know, we were, you know, we were pretty loaded up, you know, all over, all over the place. A lot of guys who were returners, you know. Uh, um, and, but, I don't know, 2013, there's nothing sweeter than your first one, I'd say, you know, probably. Um, and just hopefully there's opportunities to get more. I mean, that's, 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 you're in it to kind of you're in it to shape young men and work with the kids. And that's what pulls you back every year and wanting you to continue to do that. But, you know, you want to be, you know, play at the highest level and get those opportunities. What's the team behind you on your over your left shoulder there? Oh, that oh, is. Uh, who is that? That is uh, 13. That's 13. Yeah. that's 13. That's yeah, a constant reminder. You know, <laughs> that was but a I great team. That, yeah. I got guys on our staff who, who played in those teams. So. 
you know, it's it's fun them around. We talk about it, and they're able to kind of talk about what those, you know, what it takes to play at that level. I'm good. Well, who do you got? Uh, Alex Jamelli. Oh, Jamel, oh, the receiver. Yeah, yeah. So we got him. So he's great. He's one of our receiver coaches. Kids love him. Great. Uh, another guy was a, who was an underclassman, Mark Streckeld, but he he played on. He was there, but then his senior year was 2015. I um, mean, we went down to Darien that first time with with Rose. So. That's great. I mean, before you know it, it's going to be 10 years. <laughs> I mean, next like, two years from now, we're already eight. Uh, yeah. Where does the time, it really, it's just wild. Where, where does the time go? But uh, it flies, it flies. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad to see you guys have a, so, so we're a little excited here. Uh, you know, you're, you're thankful for the extra day to get a little extra day to prepare for Greenwich. Oh yeah. I mean, yes, they, they do great thing. Great job down there. Um, you know, they're talent. They're a highly talented team. You know, we know that. Um, so we got to play great, you know, we got to play great and stake free football and um, just play, you know, our brand of football um, and being able to, you know, minimize, you know, best we can things that they do and maximize things that we're good at. And, you know, we'll see how it shapes up. I know it's their homecoming. So it's going to be a hostile environment. We love that, you know, love going into those environments. It's fun. Kids love it. So how many great. times is you have you guys, I can't remember many Saturday games for Southington. Not often. Um, man, I, I can't. There's not not many. I can't even think of any right now. Right. It's been, it's been a while. Yeah. Three o'clock game. A little late in the day. Yeah. It's going to be you guys going to be the spotlight's going to be on you. That's well, that's the, yeah. Everyone in the state is going to be there watching. Yeah. No pressure. Yeah. yeah. No pressure. You know, absolutely. But these are the game. These are like, you know, these type of opportunities are things that you really kind of get your energy and your juices flowing as a coach and as a player. Um you know, a new opponent. We haven't played them. I mean, Sennington hasn't played them since, I think, 2007. Wow. It was the semi final. Yeah. Semi. Was it semi? Was a final? Or I, think it was, was it? I think it was a semi. Yeah. 06 sure. was Southington six. played them in the championship. Championship. Yeah. So it's been a long yeah. time. So. And then 1999, I think. <laughs> in 99. Yeah. yeah. So there wasn't a lot of opportunities there. Um, and so it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Well, I'll tell you this, just a little tip, maybe, you know, show the guys before, show them a photo of the scoreboard before. So when you get there, you're not like, holy crap, that's like the biggest thing I've ever seen. Oh you know, God. you don't want to, you don't want them to get distracted. So show them a photo of the scoreboard before. So it's just, it's just regular when you get there. It's very easy to be mesmerized by it. It is gigantic. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, no, I will. Yeah. We'll have to take a look at that. Yeah. I saw it already. <laughs> <laughs> And then, I, Coach, I got I got one more for you because you did mention uh, 15 when you went down to Darien, 16 you went to Darien, you played him twice in 2019. Since Saturday, how many times has Kevin Frederick texted you about preparing for Darien? Oh, we've we've talked a lot of, a lot about him, you know. But <laughs> he's ready and he's he he he's prepared. He's he's ready to go. You know, we've had conversations about it, and uh, but. He's you know, gonna get his guys. He'll, he'll be geared up, ready to go. Are they there too? Are they playing there as well? Yep, Friday yeah, okay. night. Okay, Friday night. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he'll be he'll be juiced up. He'll be ready. You know, I know, I know his guys, and and that'll be you know a, a great game. Another another great alliance game right there as well. And you know, hopefully, we both end up in the on the good the good side of it. The one thing I yeah, don't I just like, picture Kevin I, like just sitting and punching you text messages, being like, oh. "Anything you got, Mike? Anything you got?" <laughs> We, yeah, believe me, we talked a lot about them over the years, and um, so <laughs> I know his game plan. I know he'll 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 have those guys prepared, ready. The one thing I don't like is that you play a team in the regular season, and then like you meet him in the playoffs. If it's a team yeah. that the alliance sets it up, like this could be a state championship preview. I mean, who knows, right? I mean, it's an eight; it's a little different, but what yeah. Do you think? I don't know. Hey, well, you get some familiarity, you know. If things go really good, or if things go really bad, or it's tight, whatever it is, you're gonna you're gonna learn from it. it be like a first time kind of well, seeing them and to see what's going on. Yeah, now you're gonna, I mean, you know, you get how, how much did that help you guys in '19? Because I was at when you played Darien in the regular season, and that score was not indicative of that game. I think it was too late fumble recoveries for touchdowns against too late that kind of made the score a little the margin a lot bigger than it initially was. But then you played them in the state finals in, uh, in the, in the state playoffs. And I think it was 21, 12, the second time through. So you've actually done that in terms of playing twice or a yeah. team twice because of the Alliance. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I thought it was good. I mean, you know, we had a much better game plan going in against them, you know, seeing their personnel and we, we, we kept our, 
ourselves right in it right there until the end. And, um, you know, they just came out ahead of us. Uh, but, um, you know, I didn't mind it, you know, I didn't mind it because you kind of get that real true, true scout of what these guys are doing and what they're, you know, who their players are and how to defend them or, you know, attack them. Well, coach, we're excited for it. We're just sitting here arguing off beforehand. Uh, we're arguing about who's going to go. And I think the, the consensus is we're both going to go. Yeah. Awesome. We got <laughs> plenty of good, good games going on, but we both yeah. don't want to miss this one because, you know, how many times do you get to see guys come down there for a regular season game? And, you know, I don't ever get to see Southern in the, in, during the regular season unless there's, there's nothing going on at night and there's nothing. I mean, I, I think the last time I saw you was Simsbury a few years ago. So, um, you know, but I do love going to your place. You guys do a great job up there. Um, it's right in the middle for everyone, uh, you know, love, right at Fontana Field. It's great. and But we're, we're excited to come, you guys coming down, and uh, I hope everyone's going to show up. I hope the whole town's going to come down, a big caravan or like like Hickory. Yeah. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we travel well. I mean, we have great fans, great community support. Like, our parents, our students, our, we have a tremendous student section. Like, you know, it's time to show up. You know, we got to go down there and, 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 you know, do the best we can and, you know, try to come out on top here. I think it's going to be a fascinating game. You know, granted, you know, they, they had a rough time with Ridgefield. You guys have looked pretty great so far, but we both know both teams are going to bring it. So a uh, great game is the highlight of our, our week for, for sure, coach. Um, I don't know how much you're going to be too crazy and, and to, to enjoy it, but uh, but we, we thank you for you giving us a little time here. And, uh, you know, we're excited. We're really excited. It should be great. I appreciate it, Sean. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate yeah, it, man. I, absolutely. I appreciate it. All right, coach. Sounds good. We'll Thanks see you on Saturday. Right, absolutely. Man. As you notice, Pete jumped to his car during that uh, that interview. If you're watching the, the live action version of it, uh, Pete's all he, he's already getting into this mode where he's going to teleport around the state, hopefully. But it's, uh, all, Pete, it's all smoke and mirrors. Yeah, <laughs> Pete, thanks for hanging us out to dry completely. He's our he's our uh, he's our uh, our statistician here, Peter, our historian, and he completely yeah. flubbed. Uh, he had the jury was 0 six. The jury. Very nicely, without even saying, "Oh, we did beat Ridgefield." Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, that was on me. That was that was my great research. I'm gonna blame. You know what? I'm gonna blame my research assistant. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which I don't have, but it's me. Um, and actually, if we want to get real crazy, because now I'm looking it up. Not only did Southington beat Ridgefield in 2019, Southington also beat Ridgefield in 2013. Oh, geez. So he's oh, but, but it was. Wait, when did Jerry get hired? 11. Yeah. So Jerry is, uh, he's got two wins against FCI teams, but they're both Richfield. I dropped the ball. Yeah. I apologize, Mike. I've known Mike for a very long time. That's on me, man. Well, I told him we were going to, you know, before we had the interview, I told him we were going to, you know, kind of bust his chops about his FCI record. I said, oh, and six. He was, yeah, sure. Go ahead. He didn't even correct me. <laughs> he was just waiting to catch. He was waiting to pounce country. on that one. You guys know, I we actually did beat a couple teams, you know. But listen, they need to win that game, Southington. And I would not put it past them. Neither would I. I think, I said this to you earlier, I think we are in for a drastic, drastic shift in power in this state more to the north part. I think there's a strong possibility for the CCC to make some serious noise throughout the state this weekend. Really? Like some serious, like, hope. Oh, I think I might be wrong considering where I live. There might be people who come and find me, but I think, I think we're going to see the uh, CCC have a huge weekend and maybe take a little bit of that, uh, take over that narrative of what conference is the best in the state. That's my, that's my hot take for the week. Just as Mike said, it's the CCC just by sheer size is going to be good. You know, they're going to have some teams, but proportionally speaking, it's been all FCAC. And then it goes for the SEC, too. I mean, the SEC, maybe a little bit less. The SEC had its great year in 2012, and it's got a few since then, right? Hand, Sheehan, you know, a few others. Um, you know, West Haven's been in there. But, uh, but you know, for the CCC, you know, Southern won right in the middle there. You had Windsor win, but not nearly the type of you know, dominance like the FCAC. Yeah, Gary Ann, St. Joe. I mean, it's just New been, King. yeah, it's been big for us. So the CC needs to, needs to start picking it up here. I mean, even Bloomfield, Bloomfield, you know, the last two state championships, man. Yeah, it's been, it hasn't been but good. Think about it. Like, look at this. If Bloomfield beats Killingly, yeah. huge win. Oh. Right? If, if, um, 
you know, Maloney beats Darianne. Huge, huge game. If Southington beats Greenwich, huge win. I mean, there's a possibility here for a shift in the narrative of the most powerful conference. Windsor and Shelton's another one. You know, Windsor shut us up. Everyone, I think, almost everyone picked New Britain in the Pickums, and Windsor put that one right to bed. <laughs> so, you know, like, I, look, I'm not saying it's going to happen, and you're going to have to listen to the pick show to see who I pick in that game, but I, there is a possibility for this to happen. The CCC has it. If they win the right games this weekend, I think there could be a shift in, in the teams that, we are, uh, that we're talking about. It could blow up the entire top ten. We talked about this a little bit off, but – there are legitimately five, six, seven, maybe even ten so so teams that have a legit, you know, uh, argument for number one. I think Greenwich is certainly a number one pick, but Buchanan, they got a first place vote. Shelton, they got five. Killingly, Maloney, Southington, they don't have any first place votes. Where's their love? St. Joseph now 2-0, oh, Trumbull 2-0. Oh. And Sonia, I, mean, I don't know if anyone's going to make them number one, but they're certainly playing really well. So, yeah, very interesting. West Haven, by the way, lying in the weeds there. You know, we got we got to kind of kill. We we're not giving West Haven any love. We did talk about them last week, but you know their I'm, time is coming. I'm excited for West Haven. Um, the Notre Dame win was I not the win itself, but how dominant they were was eye opening. They beat Amity. You know that's a SEC. You know that should be an S. That should have been an SEC Tier 1 matchup. By just the mat, the size of those schools, they should not be an SEC Tier 2. Uh, then they got Guilford, Hillhouse, Wilbur Cross. You know, I'm circling that October 21st date for West Haven at home against Shelton. You think, you know, West Haven should probably be 5-0 and heading into that game. Shelton, maybe 5-0, and maybe a loss because their schedule is, is bonkers hard. But I think that that game on October 21st needs to be circled and attended because that's where we're really going to see what West Haven's made of. And I'm excited for it because I think West Haven is really good. I've been giving them some love. So Bar- Barlow at Weathersfield, Notre Dame West Haven at Pinnell. Um, I mean, there's a lot to watch out for, a lot to talk about. Uh, we got to get out of here. We got a busy week ahead of us. Thanks to Mike Jury coming on a little bit. And, uh, Pete, thanks for joining us on a on a on a another edition of the Meat Grinder. It was awesome. It's great. I mean, I just just love to be here talking. <laughs> loved having Mike on. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> love you all. <laughs>